You are reading a book. Because you can read. Wow, that's incredible. You are a genius. But can you pass the last part of the B2 First reading paper? Well, not if you don't know what to do. My name is Toby, this is Smash English, and here is everything you need to know about passing the last part of the reading paper for the B2 First Cambridge exam. Firstly, this is not actually part three of the reading paper, and that's because there is no reading paper. For the B2 First Cambridge exam, there is a reading and use of English paper, and this video is about part seven. Part seven of the reading and use of English paper is the third and final reading exercise that you will need to do, and so we will call it part three of the reading paper. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. The reading and use of English paper itself is one hour and 15 minutes long. Now, I suggest you dedicate 30 minutes to the use of English part of the paper, that is parts one, two, three, and four, and 45 minutes to the reading part, that is parts five, six, and seven. This means you will have 15 minutes for each reading part, and that means that for this part of the exam, you will have 15 minutes. I believe that's enough time for you, seriously. I believe in you. Oh, wow! <laughs> Thanks, Dad! <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. So then, what do you need to do for part seven of the reading and use of English paper? Well, there are two possible formats for this exercise. You may be given one long text that has been divided into five separate paragraphs, A, B, C, D, and E. Or you could be given five separate texts written about a similar topic. You will also be given 10 questions, and each question will require you to state which paragraph or text contains a certain piece of information. And maybe now you are feeling very confused, so let's look at an example. So here is a text about surfing. You can see it is divided into five paragraphs, A, B, C, D, and E. And here are the 10 questions. So again, you need to specify which paragraph contains the information in questions 1 to 10. So, how should you approach this exercise? Well, there is one thing that you should always, always, always do, and that is underline. Underline! Yes, underline. When you choose your answer, you should always be able to underline exactly where that piece of information is located. That way, you will always be able to check your answers quickly, and that's very important when you only have 15 minutes. When I practice this exercise with my students, I get them to read one paragraph and then see how many questions they can answer. Now, maybe you don't like this strategy, and that's fine. Everyone has their own way to do this task. However, let's today do things my way, okay? Yeah, let's go. Let us read one single paragraph in detail and see how many questions we can answer. And of course, whilst we do this, we will underline. Yes, yes. Here is our first paragraph. Let's read it together carefully. My journey to the sea began when I was tiny. My mum, who used to surf then, would sit me on one of her old boards and push me into the little waves in a few centimetres of water. We both soon realised I had an unstoppable appetite for the waves, something which has never faded. Soon after that, we moved to a house which was almost on the beach. I could literally walk out of the garden into the sea. Living by the sea is something you never take for granted if you surf. I open the curtains in the morning and my heart leaps as I see the long, perfect lines of waves rolling into the bay. And now for the questions. Let us go through these one by one and see if we can find any of this information in our paragraph. Here are the questions. Pause the video here and see if you can find any answers. Feeling satisfaction that her determination resulted in better performance? No. The problem of having to wait for conditions to be favourable for surfing. Nope, no mention of a problem here. A change which helped her pursue a hobby. Well, 
the writer moved house, so that is a change. And it was a house by the beach, which meant she could surf more. So let's underline that and for now, say A is the answer to this one. Notice how I said for now. Maybe when reading B, C, D or E, we will find a better fit. But for now, we will choose A and we will underline so we can do comparisons later on. Continuing to surf even when the conditions were unfavourable? No. The pleasure she gets from seeing others succeed? No. Being aware that it would take time for her abilities to be recognised? No. Her enthusiasm for the sea being recognised by someone else? This paragraph talks about her discovering her appetite for the waves, and both the writer and her mother discovered this. So let us underline this and choose A for this question too. An admission that she does not think about what she is doing when surfing. No. Not being concerned that she stood out from others. No. People appreciating her serious attitude towards her surfing. No. So we've completed our first paragraph and we have found two answers for questions 3 and 7. Now we need to do the same thing for paragraphs B, C, D and E. But don't worry, we'll do it together. I won't leave you alone. Thank you, Toby. You are like a father to me. <laughs> I know. I know. So then, let us read paragraph B. Being the only girl in the water when I was learning to surf never bothered me because I had always been trying to keep up with an elder brother who was exceptionally good at sports. So there I was. A tiny little thing, itching to better my surfing by checking out other surfers and looking for new moves. I was surfing four times a day in the summer holidays, before and after school, right through the winter months as the temperatures dropped and the sea was really wild. I just couldn't get enough of it. You will notice this process becoming easier as we go on, and that is because you will remember the questions in your head as you are reading the paragraphs. However, don't rush and don't forget to underline everything. Okay, good. Here are the questions. Pause the video here and see if you can find any answers. Feeling satisfaction that her determination resulted in better performance. We have mention of determination here with the statement itching to better my surfing but there is nothing here regarding it resulting in better performance, so let us leave this for now. The problem of having to wait for conditions to be favourable for surfing. The writer does talk about conditions here, however she never mentions waiting for them to be favourable, so no. A change which helped her pursue her hobby. Yes, yes, I know we have already done this one, but that does not mean that we should not check and double check. Maybe we will find a better answer somewhere else, so we can compare. This is why we underline. Remember, underline. No, I cannot find anything here. Continuing to surf even when the conditions were unfavourable. Yeah, the writer mentions surfing right through the winter months as the temperature dropped and the sea was really wild. So, let us put B here. The pleasure she gets from seeing others succeed. No. Being aware that it would take time for her abilities to be recognised. No. Her enthusiasm for the sea being recognised by someone else. I cannot see anything here that is more appropriate than A, so no. An admission that she does not think about what she is doing when surfing. No. Not being concerned that she stood out from others. The phrasal verb to stand out means to be different and easy to notice. She mentions that being the only girl in the water when I was learning to surf never bothered me. So yeah, let us say B here. People appreciating her serious attitude towards her surfing. No. So we have found two answers in this paragraph too. So that's two answers in paragraph A and two answers in paragraph B. However, don't think that the answers are always distributed equally. Sometimes you may find three answers in one paragraph and zero answers in another. 
It's possible. So don't think, oh, I found two answers already in A, so I can move on. No, it doesn't work like that. Yes? Okay. So don't worry if you read an entire paragraph and don't find an answer. Start worrying if you've read all of the paragraphs and still have spaces. If that happens, jump out the window and hope that you are not taking your exam on the ground floor, because the aim is death or injury. No, 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 it's not. Don't hurt yourself. Everything will be fine, I promise. Now, let's go on to paragraph C. Things started to get competitive as I got older and stronger. I was tackling more challenging waves, faster, more powerful, and more dangerous. But I was gaining confidence and building up my experience, and it was really rewarding to see myself improving. And that is when the boys started to notice me. And they weren't too sure how to cope with it. They seemed to think along the lines of, she's only a girl, she won't manage that wave, so I'll get in there and show her how to do it. Convincing them that I could hold my own in the waves wasn't going to happen overnight. Pause the video here and see if you can find any answers. Feeling satisfaction that her determination resulted in better performance. Yeah, she mentions she was tackling more challenging waves and that it was really rewarding to see myself improving. So, let us say C here. The problem of having to wait for conditions to be favourable for surfing. Nope, no mention of a problem here. A change which helped her pursue her hobby? I cannot see anything better than our choice of A here. Continuing to surf even when the conditions were unfavourable? Nothing better than B here. The pleasure she gets from seeing others succeed? She doesn't say anything about the success of others. Being aware that it would take time for her abilities to be recognised? Yeah, she says convincing them, the boys, that I could hold my own in the waves wasn't going to happen overnight. So, let us say C here. Her enthusiasm for the C being recognised by someone else. I cannot see anything better than A. Here it mentions that the boys started to notice her abilities, but there is no mention of her enthusiasm. A is still the best choice. An admission that she does not think about what she is doing when surfing. No. Not being concerned that she stood out from others. Nothing better than B here. People appreciating her serious attitude towards her surfing. No. Oh, are you feeling tired yet? Because I am. Um, let's go on to the next paragraph. Over time and after a few hair-raising moments, I made some friends and mutual respect blossomed between me and the guys who spent all their time in the waves with me. When I started pulling off some good moves on my surfboard and throwing a bit of spray on the waves, they began giving me a bit of credit. So that if I was going out when the surf was really big, they would shout out instructions to make sure I had the best chance. They knew I wasn't messing about and that I was going for it out there. Things got really interesting when I went into competitions. In fact, I entered every national surfing competition over 10 years. Competition surfing can be extremely frustrating since you can never guarantee waves at a certain time on a certain day, and there's vast amounts of hanging around. So, let's look at the questions. Pause the video here and see if you can find any answers. Feeling satisfaction that her determination resulted in better performance. There is nothing here about her satisfaction, so I think C is still the best option. The problem of having to wait for conditions to be favourable for surfing. Yeah. She writes, Competition surfing can be extremely frustrating, since you can never guarantee waves at a certain time on a certain day, and there is vast amounts of hanging around. So D is our answer here. A change which helped her pursue her hobby? No. Continuing to surf even when the conditions were unfavourable? No. The pleasure she gets from seeing others succeed? Nope. Being aware that it would take time for her abilities to be recognised? No. Her enthusiasm for the sea being recognised by someone else? No. An admission that she does not think about what she is doing when surfing? No. Not being concerned that she stood out from others? No. People appreciating her serious attitude towards her surfing? Yes. She states, Mutual respect blossomed between me and the guys who spent all their time in the waves with me. So, yeah, this is our answer here. 
So then, we have read four paragraphs and we have eight answers completed. That means that in our final paragraph, paragraph E, we should be able to find the two remaining answers. If we can't, then, well, the window's over there. Now I've set up a surf school and I've got a whole new perspective. When you start teaching something, you have to learn for yourself again. Everything you have been doing instinctively without really noticing for the last 15 years has now got to be passed on, and it gets surprisingly detailed and tricky in parts. But it's been fantastic introducing so many people to the sport, and it's even better when you get to see their big grins when they stand up for the first time and ride a wave into the shore. Surfing has taken me all over the world, and now it feels like it's brought me home again. So, one last time. Here are the questions, pause the video here, and see if you can find any answers. Feeling satisfaction that her determination resulted in better performance? No. The problem of having to wait for conditions to be favourable for surfing? No. A change which helped her pursue her hobby? No. Continuing to surf even when the conditions were unfavourable? No. The pleasure she gets from seeing others succeed? Yes. She says it is even better when you get to see their big grins when they stand up for the first time and ride a wave into the shore. So that's one found. Let's see if we can find another. Being aware that it would take time for her abilities to be recognised? No. Her enthusiasm for the sea being recognised by someone else? No. An admission that she does not think about what she is doing when surfing? Yeah. She says she had been doing everything instinctively, without really noticing for the last 15 years. So this must be the answer. Not being concerned that she stood out from others? No. And people appreciating her serious attitude towards her surfing? No. So, there we go. We've read all of the paragraphs and we've found all of the answers. What a brilliant day to be alive. Ha! What do we say to the window? We say, not today. Wow. Maybe you don't like my strategy. Maybe you prefer to read all of the questions first and then read all of the texts and then try and work things out. That's fine. It's up to you. This is the strategy that I do with my students and it's the one I have the most success with. Maybe your teacher has success doing something else and that's fine. It's not a competition. Yes? Good. And with that, we are finished. That was my strategy for completing part 7 of the B2First Reading and Use of English paper. Maybe your teacher has taught you a different strategy, or maybe you use a different strategy. And that's fine. There is a different strategy for everyone. If mine works for you, that's great. If it doesn't, find another one. That's great too. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment down below. My name is Toby, and this was Smash. English.